Hey cruise addicts, so welcome along to the latest video from Addicted to Ships. Today I'm going to take you through five tips to improve your cruise experience. Whether you be new to cruising or you've cruised before, there may be one, two or several of these tips that you may not have considered before. So before we kick off, please do consider subscribing to the channel to help me grow and allow me to bring you more content just like this and also please do feel free to give any feedback and comments below also if you have any of your own tips which could help the community then please do share them below so the aim is for you to save time money or stress or all three so let's jump right in starting with topic number one and that is pre-cruise planning. So before you get on your cruise it can be useful for you to join a roll call where you'll meet like-minded fellow travellers that are going to be on your ship and then you can get to make friends before you actually get on board. There are the likes of Cruise Critic or Shipmate and then you've also got the option to search for your roll call on Facebook as well. So yeah it can be a really good way for you to get to make friends before you get on board especially if you're a solo traveller but not exclusively. Next thing is, once you've joined these locals, get involved in the activities. So somebody may have planned a pub crawl, or they may have planned a bar crawl, or a slot crawl, or just a meet and greet. So, get involved. It's a really quick way of getting to make friends with people as soon as you step on board. Then you've always got somebody, if you're at least end, then you can meet up with them. Moving on then, pre-book items online. So, with COVID, things are not as straightforward uh, with shows particularly. You used to be able to go ahead and book your shows before you get on board. That doesn't tend to be the case at the moment, but things are rapidly changing with COVID environment, so that may well come back again. So, should that be available, you really want to get to see your show, then go ahead and book that. Likewise, if you book your drinks package, if you've already decided that's what you're going to do, or the internet package, then go ahead, buy that online. More often than not, you will actually save yourself money versus doing that on board as well. Next up, it is pack the things that you enjoy taking with you. If you've got a particular brand of shampoo, body wash, toothpaste, or you have over-the-counter meds, I would recommend you take them with you because when you get on board you will probably either find that there is not the brand that you normally use or, and this is the biggest one, it's going to cost you a lot more than it would for you to buy it on land. And finally in this topic, underpack. Take items that match. So take trousers, jackets, skirts that you can interchange with other things. Keep it neutral colours. Think blacks, greys, that kind of thing and then you can add a bit of colour underneath it all. On to the next topic then which is private shore excursions. Now many people book through the cruise line and I understand why they do that. It's often the fear of being left behind. So these are five things for you to consider why maybe a private shore excursion is the option for you. So number one, it can definitely save you money. Versus with the cruise line, you can find an identical tour and you'll probably be paying a lot less. Number two, it can be a more intimate experience. Often with the cruise lines, you have groups of 30 or 30 plus. With the private excursion companies, these groups can be a lot smaller. Obviously, do your research online and find a group size that you're happy with. So on to the point that causes a lot of fear, missing that ship. Now with these private companies, they will often guarantee you getting back on the ship because if you think about it, if there was a company that allowed a coach full of people to come back and miss a ship, what is that going to do for their reputation? Their brand, their revenue relies on it. So they're going to do absolutely everything in their power for that to never, ever happen. So that should hopefully put your mind at rest. Check online, reach out to them, ask them, do they have a guarantee that will get you back on the ship? I've booked with companies before that if the ship is missed, they will cover your flight fare to get you to the next port stop. So 
that is one to consider if you're worried about missing the ship but you want to save money. Next then, you can often create your own itinerary. So if you have a tour where you're spending three hours at one place, one hour at another and two hours at another place, if you decide you want to do two hours at each, reach out to them, ask them if that's an option. And often, tied in with that, you can often choose who you want in your group. If you want to travel with four people, six people, eight people, you are then traveling with a group of people that you know if that's what you choose to do. So not only can you potentially choose your own itinerary, you can travel with the people that you want to travel with. Some people like to get to mix with other people, it's part of cruising, but if you've got your own party and you want to do a specific excursion just with your group on that day, then that's something you can reach out to that company and ask if that's a possibility. So moving on to the next section, drinks packages. Should you get one? Five things for you to consider. Number one, how many sea days are there? If you've got all port stops, how much drinking are you realistically gonna do if you're up early each morning, if your tours are early, obviously? So, calculate the number of sea days that you have and the port days that you're gonna have. Next up, do some research, look online, go to a search engine, put in your cruise line and drinks prices. It shouldn't be too difficult for you to find a menu with up-to-date price list and then compare that with the price of the drink package. Next, calculate your daily spend. Work out what you would spend on a sea day, work out what you would spend on a port day and add them all together for the number of days that you've got and then calculate that and compare it against the drinks package. Don't forget at this point to include coffees, waters, sodas, anything else that you drink that's non-alcoholic because that often can be missed. So add absolutely everything that you think that you would drink throughout the day to get a truly effective cost. Once you've done that, you've got your per drink price and how many drinks you're gonna have and what the cost is per cruise versus your drink package price. How far off are they? Is it very close? Is there not a lot in it? Or is it a million miles away? If it's quite close, you might want to consider the drink package just in case you splurge just that little bit extra on one day and then you're covered. If it's a million miles away, then why not put some money aside for the drinks that you're gonna have with a little bit extra just to be on the safe side and you've got it covered. Drinks packages may seem attractive, but at the cost of some of them, Depending on the cruise line, drinks costs can be very reasonable or exactly the opposite. So do your research before you go. Next up then, so boarding or embarkation day, please allow enough time to get to the port. If you are flying or getting a taxi, uh, an Uber, a bus, a coach, driving, however you plan to get there, especially if you're flying, it's always recommended that you fly in the day before. The last thing you want after saving for months or sometimes years and looking forward to this cruise to scupper at the last minute by missing it because you didn't allow enough time. Next up, muster. So assuming your room is ready when you get on board, do muster, get it over and done with, get it out of the way. The reason I say if your room is ready is so often with COVID at the moment you are asked to watch a video in your room before you go to your muster station. So as early as it is available for you to do muster then I recommend you do that, get it out of the way and then you can relax when those tannoy messages are coming out reminding people to please go to their muster station, you've already done it. Next then is to book your dining and shows that you really want to go to and see. So if you've got a particular restaurant at a particular day and time that you want to get to, or you've got a show that you just cannot miss, go right ahead and do that upon embarkation and get your slot and then you don't have to worry about it and you've got something to look forward to. Next up, is there a pocket map? If there is, there often is. If there is one, pop it in your pocket. If you ever get lost and you want to get from A to B, you can quickly look it up and know where it is. And then finally, get to know the ship. Familiarize yourself with the ship layout on day one. You really will thank yourself later. Have a really good mooch around, have a good explore, because when you're trying to find somewhere and you're in a rush and you don't know where you're going, it's extremely stressful. If you know where you're going, then you can make a dash there. And also, if you've got that pocket map, then you can also use that to refer to. On to the fifth and final topic then, first night dining. Where are you assigned? 
tying in with exploring the ship, find out where your restaurant is. Often ships can have two, three, four main dining rooms. Find out where you are, which deck is it on? Is it forward, mid or aft? Explore, find out where it is. Next up, do you have any special requests? Do you want to sit with people that you haven't linked to your booking? Do you want a window table if it's possible? Do you have any dietary requirements or any allergies? If you've not already passed this on to the cruise line, then go to your restaurant on day one and speak to the maitre d' and get those arrangements and requests in. They may not be able to accommodate a table, but they certainly will be able to accommodate your dietary requirements. The earlier that you do that, the less of a delay to you receiving your food on the evening. And finally, how much is specialty dining? Often on night one, they will reduce the price to make that more attractive because lots of people tend to head to either the main dining room or the buffet. So if you've got your eye on a restaurant you particularly want to visit, why not do it on night one and save yourself some money? So, those are my tips for improving your cruise experience. So I hope you found them useful. If you have any of your own, as I say, please do pop them down below to help the community in the comments section. Or if you have any other comments or feedback, do please leave that below. Uh, please do consider liking the video and also subscribing to the channel. So that will allow me to grow and bring you extra content. So thank you so much for watching. Take care, guys. Bye bye now.